Cool, we're here with Crash and Burn Racing, and today we're checking out the FX3 VTX made by AKK. In the package, you will receive your VTX, an SMA antenna connector, your wiring harness, and this very lovely color manual here. For the specs, it will handle 7 to 24 volts. It does have smart audio. Power output includes 25, 200, 400, 600 milliwatts. This does feature the MMCX connector. One big problem to note is that just like the Mach 2 VTX that is also made by AKK, this has the Betaflight 3.3 bug where Smart Audio will not work. So as of right now, if you were to update your flight controller to Betaflight 3.3, the Smart Audio will not work. And it has 20 by 20 millimeter spacing mounting holes. It is listed at weighing 4.6 grams. My scale shows it at 4.5 grams. So I've been running this VTX in my Vertex 2.5 inch frame here. And I've got to say it's been holding up quite well. I've been running it for about 6 to 7 weeks right now. And the way I was running it was I had an antenna sticking directly out the back like this without the antenna supported. And as a result it actually over time broke off this entire connector here. So now the antenna come out the back here is directly soldered. So if, if you decide to get this uh, VTX, just make sure that this is actually soldered pretty well. If it's not, you can always add some solder here and reinforce it or actually add some epoxy on this connector. But you sh as long as you have this actually su supported on the frame, you should be just fine. So this little FX3 VTX is going to get a new home in my little Vertex 2 inch frame here. I was running a Tiny Whip VTX, but just wasn't really happy with this performance. So we're going to drop it into this frame right here. Now that we've got our VTX hooked up, we can now see how it works. Another nice option this thing has is it actually has a button to go through your power bands and, and your channels. And you don't have to just use a smart audio if you can't get it to work. So first of all, in order to change your channels, it's just going to be a short single press. And there you get through all eight of your channels. And to change bands, right now we are in race band. We're going to hold it down until we see that R blink. There, it's blinking. And there we can go through all 40, or excuse me, I should say five bands of A, B, E, F, and R. And to change power, right now we're at number one, which is 25 milliwatts, and we're going to hold this button down again until our number one pops up and starts blinking. There we go. And there you can see number two, three, and four, and that is how you change the power. I now have it set up to get some power readings and I have my fan just to the right over here and it's going to be blowing air over the VTX here just to give it a constant temperature and we're going to do readings all in race band channels 1 through 8 to really find out what this thing's going to average in all the power settings and we'll come back with a graph and check it out. Looking at the chart we can see that all the averages come in pretty close with the exception of the 600 milliwatt power setting. There we feel a, feel a bit low but uh, Overall, it's actually not too bad. The, uh, the uh, ambient temperature was 15 degrees Celsius and the temperature stayed pretty low on the VTX, but the one thing to keep in mind is that the power output greatly depends on the temperature of the VTX. So if it's a hotter day, it could actually decrease um, quite significantly than these numbers. But as long as it has airflow, it should be fine. For the flight footage, I do have a Fox Shear Predator Micro, which is a CMOS camera. Super awesome. You can check out my review to that if you're interested. And also for the antenna, I just have my normal whip antenna on here. And although this is not the most ideal way to mount it, I usually don't get that far away with the micro anyway. And you'll still be able to see the quality of the video, but if you want a little bit better range, definitely don't mount it this close to your body. You just want it sticking out a little bit. So here's a range test where I go out to about 300 meters before I get a little bit of a break up in my video. And again, all that could be just due to how I have my antenna mounted. But a thing to keep in mind is that your video is really dependent on your antenna setup. Some antennas are better than others. But for what this is, it's not an ideal setup and I think it handled it really, really well. As for the smart audio function, it works very well. Channels change just fine like any other smart audio capable VTX. The only difference is that with this having the, the odd 200, 400, 600 milliwatt, it does correlate a little bit differently to what the OD, OSD actually shows, but it still does work. One thing to mention is that the mounting holes on this board are actually three millimeters wide and most stacks now are two millimeter. It's not really a deal breaker, but I think something to keep in mind. I have it running with M2 hardware and it mounts up just fine. 
that wraps up this video. If you have any questions about this VTX, please post them in the comments below. And if you liked the video, give it a like. And if you disliked it, give it a dislike. I'm Corey with Crash and Burn Racing, and thank you for watching.